Hi, let's have a look at how we can change the, the size of our cat sprite using lots of different um, scripts and different tools. So the first thing I'll show you is um, the shrink tool up the top. If I click onto that shrink tool once and then click onto the sprite that we want to shrink and just keep, keep on clicking onto the, the sprite, you can see that it shrinks. So I want to make my uh, Right, grow. I've always got access to the grow tool. Click onto that once again and then click onto the sprite and you can see that my cat is growing back in size. So that's a, that's a couple of the manual ways of changing the sizes of your characters or your sprites. What's another way? If we have a look at the, the looks tab um, and let's have a look at how this particular block works. So this change size by 10. Um, let's just click onto that once to see what happens. Hmm, there you go. We can see that my cat is actually increasing its size by 10 as I click onto this block. How about if I want to um, decrease the size of my sprite? In this instance, I can always change the numbers around. So instead of having a positive number, we need to put in a negative number to reflect a decrease in the size. So now if I click onto this block, you can see that it is decreasing its size every time I click onto it. So that's how you can sort of understand how this change size by block works. All right, so let's just have a look at some events that we can actually um, apply. So when you're creating a Scratch project or a game, there are certain events that you may want to trigger. So for example, um, let's have a look at this particular event block, which is when space key pressed, change size by negative 10. So let's just change this back to positive and say, for example, I would like to use my B key. So, oops, let me just do that again. So here what I'm saying is if I click if I press down on my B key on my keyboard, then basically what I'm asking Scratch to do is to change the size by 10. So there you go. I'm just clicking onto my B key and it seems to be doing what I'm asking Scratch to do. If I want to duplicate this block script without having to drag everything out again, I can just change some of my events around. So I may want to apply a different scenario where if I press the S key, I want to shrink its size by negative 10. So let me just click onto my S key and see what happens. And there you go. Now that I'm clicking onto my S key, it seems to be shrinking. So that is working quite well. So let me just uh, grab my change size by 10 block again. And maybe this time um, I want to right click and duplicate that block. And I want to apply a negative 10. So the next set of instructions that I want to apply is that I want my cat sprite to grow and shrink, grow and shrink, grow and shrink. So what is the instruction that I need to apply or what is the program I need to give to Scratch? So basically I've got here change size by 10, then I've got change size by negative 10. Let's click onto that. Is it doing anything? No, it's really not doing anything because basically Scratch is trying to apply these two different sets of instructions all at the same time. So it's kind of doing it, but it's doing it so fast that you can't actually see any changes occurring. So what we need to do is maybe we need to jump into our control tab and give a second set of instructions to Scratch to say, change the size by 10, just wait one second, and then change the size by negative 10. So let's see if that works. There you go. So if I click onto it again, you can see that the cat is growing and then it waits one second and then it shrinks back by negative 10. So, um, but I want this action to be performed 
on an ongoing basis. I want it to occur forever and forever. So I can drag my forever block out and wrap it around my little set of instructions. So anything that's captured within my forever block, it will perform or run this action on an ongoing basis. So let's click onto that. Mm. It is doing, um, it is performing or it is running the script, but the action, however, looks a little bit um, buggy. So let me stop this testing and I may have to apply a wait one second block after the last set of instructions. So I want to change the size by 10, wait one second, then decrease the size by 10, wait one second, and then forever apply this instruction. So now let's click onto that and let's see what happens. There you go. That looks kind of nice and it's running smoothly. All right, so let me stop that script. But when you're creating a game or creating a scratch story or a project, you may want to apply a trigger, an event. So for example, whenever I press my green flag to start the game, do I want this action to occur? So let's just jump into my events block and let's just drag this when green flag clicked and snap it right on the top. And then let's just test this. So what I'm doing is when the green flag is clicked, forever, increase the size by 10, wait a second, decrease, and then wait a second, and forever run this script. So let me stop that. So that seems to be working. Now there are different events that you can apply when you are creating different games, different situations. So. Let me detach that when green flag is clicked. And let's have a look at where you have lots of different characters and lots of different sprites in your scratch game or in your story. And you only want this particular set of actions to occur when a particular sprite is clicked. So we can always apply this when this sprite click blocked right at the top. And now that I've clicked onto it to test the script, it seems to be performing its action quite nicely. So I'll stop that at the moment. So that's how you can sort of change the size of your characters, apply different events depending on what type of story or game that you want to create. Have fun creating your Scratch project.